let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God. Summer is here. Thanks for joining us for worship this morning. I'm John Carolis, one of our associate pastors here at Shepherd of the Desert. And it's so good to have you with us as we make our way through this series, Now Your Ordinary Sunday. What does it mean that Jesus' resurrection continues to have an impact on our daily lives, especially on the days that we gather together to worship Him in church, whether it be in person or virtually? God's Word has an impact on our lives. It changes who we are, shaping us into people more like Him. Have you ever noticed that we get kind of protective of our stuff? We start to get a little selfish when the things that we like most about our lives, whether it be the things that we have or the people we're connected to or the, the home that we live in, the characteristics of our personality we're most proud of, when those things start to get attention from other people in a way that they start to want to share in our experience of them, we start to, to get a little hesitant to engage, right? We start to step back a little bit and put up maybe an arm, a stiff arm or two. We start to separate ourselves from people that get a little too close to us. Now, this can be a good thing when, when those things are, are important to remain a personal, but sometimes God calls us to a generous life. And so that instinct we have to keep others away from us actually does more harm than good. But today we're going to hear a story about a woman who is impacted by the gospel in such a way that when God opened her heart, so she opened her home to others. And we're reminded in that example of the calling we each have, even in the face of the fact that we are tempted into being protective and selfish of our things, to be open and generous toward others. Because God has been open and generous toward us. We have received so many great blessings because He has called us as His own. He has wiped away our sins. He has established a new life in us. He calls us to participate with Him in showing that same love toward others. This morning as we join in worship, I want you to be thinking about how an open heart can result in an open home in some way in your life. Let's join in worship together.
We're making our way through our series, Not Your Ordinary Sunday. We're walking through passages in the book of Acts as we see what it means that the resurrection of Christ has impacted the life and growth of the church in this new covenant era, this time where our relationship with God is one that is personal, one that has a significance in our lives each and every single day, not one that just simply guides, uh, guides our lives and our decision-making through abstract instructions, but actually has a personal impact. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about what it means that it is more blessed to give than to receive, how we model after our mothers and the love that they have for other people. In other words, we were removing self-centeredness from our main focus. And then last week, we talked about what it means to focus on the outsiders instead of the insiders. How do we put other people into the focus from where our self-centeredness previously was? Other people are in the focus. Today, we're talking about what it actually means to do something with this change in focus, how do you actually engage with and serve? How do, you, how do you connect with the people that are now in your focus? If you've moved self-centeredness, if you've brought others, outsiders into focus, what are the things that you can do in response to, as a result of the faith that you have, being transformed by the gospel, transformed by this good news? And we're going to look at a story in Acts chapter 16 uh, about this woman who was converted to Christianity. She was someone that we understand um, was sort of a, a, a convert to Judaism. She wasn't of Jewish birth herself, but she came across the word. She came across that message and she uh, followed along with the teachings. And so the apostles are out in the city, Philippi, and they come across this, this woman, Lydia, and she hears the message and it transforms her and equips her to act and live in a different way. Then we're going to talk about what it means to model ourselves after that. How can we take on the heart of Lydia? How can we live like Lydia so that people encounter 
us in a transformed state. And it's not just abstract. It's not just this idea that we should serve other people, but what are the ways that God has given you specifically, personally, individually, a method by which to connect with others? And I'll share a little bit of a personal story in my own life, how I was impacted by that attitude from another person. So let's hear from Acts chapter 16 as we, as we study again what it means that this extraordinary Easter Sunday has an impact for our lives every single day since that miraculous moment. Let's read from Acts chapter 16. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer, and we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. So what's happening in this story? Well, first we need to understand the significance of Macedonia, of Philippi. This was the first time in the history of the church that Paul, the apostle, the missionary, took his team out of um, Asia Minor, out of the, the, the Middle East area and into Europe, into Europe proper. This was the first time the gospel was moving into a new continent. And it's, it is remarkable, the people that God uses to establish the roots of his church in that time are a group of women who gather together on the Sabbath to pray to him on the riverbank. The Apostle Paul and his team meet these women there and they connect especially with Lydia. And they share the good news of Jesus, the, the Jesus who fulfilled the covenant, the promise, the, the establishment, the connection with God the Father who won four people on the cross, forgiveness of sins, established a new life, proclaiming the reign of God here on earth and the extension of his kingdom through the church. They told Lydia about all these wonderful things and she grabbed onto their message. If you go back to the Greek, the word that is used means that she listened intently, that she heeded the word with, with, uh, with, in, with intensity, with urgency. This was a message that she grabbed onto and took as her own. She accepted it. She received it. She responded to it. And as we hear the story, she's baptized. Her whole household comes to faith. And she says, look, this has had an impact on me. If you agree that I'm a true believer, if you can see that this has done something to me, please let me serve you by opening my house to you. And so the apostles, the team, they stayed with Lydia at that house. This is, this is an amazing story. We could get into all kinds of different details about how God uses people of all different stations of life for the furthering of his kingdom. But what I want us to focus on is that Lydia heard the message and it opened her heart. And when her heart was open to God's message, she opened her home to other people. I think I may have shared a story like this before, but it's had such an impact on my life. When I was in high school, there was, a, there, was a, uh, there was a mentor in my life and his wife, Ben and Melissa, and they had this open door policy in their home for any, uh, any students that needed somewhere to go or were looking for some kind of social community to plug into. They opened their home to these students, whether they had good home lives or bad home lives, whether they had to come over right after school because they didn't have a job or they came over at 9 p.m. when they got off their shift, they opened their home to students of all kinds. And there was just a group of us friends who ended up spending a lot of time in their home. Eventually, even Ben started a a Bible study before school on certain mornings and we would gather together with him and and have breakfast and, and, and be launched into our day already prepared with the word of God. And when I reflect on that truth, when I reflect on that reality, that time and season in my life, I remember that this is the kind of response we should all have to God's message. Lydia heard the message of God in the story from Acts chapter 16. He opened her heart. She opened her home. When I think of Ben and Melissa, dear friends in my life, their hearts are open to God's message and they have opened their home to people, to students, to to young people in their life to experience generosity and a place to call home, even if they're not related, even if it's inconvenient, even if they don't contribute anything into what's put on the table or what's in the fridge, they're opening their home to others. And it has me thinking, you and I get kind of protective about the stuff we have in life. Maybe stuff for you is your possessions. Maybe it's your money. Maybe it's your time. 
Maybe it's your family or your relationships. There are things that matter a great deal to us. And there's a, a, there's, a, there's a temptation that works its way into our hearts that makes us protective of these things in an unhealthy way, in a negative way, where we don't want to um, take these good things in our life and share them with others. Rather, we want to enjoy them just to ourselves. But when we read through the story in Acts chapter 16, you can't help but hear the transformation taking place in Lydia's heart when she hears the message and then opens her home to the missionaries, to that team of people. She wanted to host this group of guys who were bringing the gospel to Europe. And that makes me, and that makes me want to challenge you to think about what in your life is a home for you. What do you have in your life that you could open up as a home for others? Maybe it's an attitude or a a choice of language. Maybe you're gifted in a, a way of connecting to people where relationships are how you build a home in your life. Or maybe, maybe it is your physical house. Like Ben and Melissa, maybe you have a dwelling that can accommodate other people spending time with you there. And you might have connections with people who could benefit from spending time in your space. Maybe it's simply a use of of your vehicle. Can you be giving rides to people or or sharing in the the wealth that you have by by way of the seats in your car? Or simply time with others. Whose phone calls could you be answering or whose texts could you be responding to in a way that communicates an open heart because of the transformed life that you and I now live because of the powerful impact of the gospel? We are called to live this life reaching out to others. And each of us is gifted in unique ways to share this good news with others. What is that good way that you can open up a home for others in your life? And not just others in a broad sense, not imaginary people, but think of the people God has connected you to personally. And how can you serve them, whether they're Christians or not? How can you exhibit this transformed life in the lives of the people around you? Open a home, open a conversation, open open your car door, Open up seats at your table. What can we do together walking forward in life, sharing this good news with others as we have been opened up in our hearts? Let's open up our homes, our lives with others. All this we say, all this we ask God to work in our lives in Jesus' name, amen. When we talk about this abstract idea of generosity, of course our minds always go toward money. And when it comes to giving money to church, sometimes maybe you have this preoccupation, this presupposition that churches are always asking for money, that offerings are some way for us just to kind of uh, feel good about how we're a member of a church. But really one important mindset to have when you approach giving and church is simply that giving is a way for us to remind ourselves powerfully, tangibly, in a way that we feel that God is the owner of everything in our lives, that everything we enjoy, we are stewards of. We are representatives overlooking this thing on, on account of God. He has entrusted these things into our lives. Now, maybe you have worked hard because of the gifts that you have to obtain the things that are yours. But the gifts that you have, the personality, the skill set that you have acquired, even that itself is a gift from God. So would you consider joining us here at Shepherd in our mission of leading people to follow Jesus through, through a donation today in this, uh, through this online um, giving portal that we have? Not to say that you're a part of this Shepherd mission, not to take ownership of the things that we're all doing, even though these gifts tie us together, but simply as an act of trust to say, God, I know that everything I have is yours. Use this for the good of your kingdom as a way that you see fit. 
Let's all join in sacrificial, intentional, and joyful giving together, knowing that God has opened our lives to Him. How can we open ourselves as well to His work in our lives through the gifts that He gives us? We're going to take some time for prayer today. And as we pray, put these specific things on your heart. God, open my eyes to the people in my life who I might open my home to whether it be my physical dwelling, whether it be the gifts and relationships I have, whether it be simply the connection I have with that person, God, help me to see and perceive the ways in which I can connect with people in my life in a way that shows them your love. Let's pray to specifically be be connected to people, to identify them in our lives. They're already there. God has already put people in your lives and he is preparing you to deliver his gifts to them. Let's pray that God would equip us and inspire us to do just that, starting even today, even this week, into the months and years ahead. I pray that God would bless you this week as you go about your weekly activities, whether you have a daily routine, whether you have a career you're jumping uh, into, you're working through, whether you're retired and you're taking time to be with family, to, to invest in yourself. May God bless your efforts and may he use you in a way that his transformational word is communicated to others, that you would get to see what it's like for hearts to open up to the gospel message, to the truth, to the joy that is a relationship with Jesus. And then also join hands and and, and actions with people in your life, opening up yourselves to others in generous ways. Whether it be finances, whether it be relationships, whether it be your dwelling, and in all kinds of ways, God uses us to share his love with others. May you be spurred on for that effort. May God bless you and keep you in that mindset this week. May he smile on you and be kind to you. May he deliver you his peace so that as you embark on this generous journey, You would not be afraid, you would not be worried, but you would be inspired and you would be courageous in that effort to share his love with others. All this we say, we ask, we implore in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who binds us, who holds us together and equips us to share his love with the world. Have a great week.
What about?